Hi, you're here with Tristan, field application engineer for NewTek. Today we're going to have a look at the Zepto SDR, the new software defined radio platform by NewTek based on the Zinc processor and we're going to see how it can be used in the GNU radio. So I'm going to simply launch my GNU radio companion. So I guess this is the basic GNU environment, uh, GNU radio environment with, with which uh, most GNU radio users are familiar. Uh, the white workspace on the left-hand side, where we're actually going to build um, a flow graph to define what the actual uh, radio application is going to do. After you install the GNU radio plugin by NewTag for the Radio 420, uh, Radio 420 is the radio transceiver and receiver inside of the Zepto SDR, then you get an extra module down at the bottom in your uh, GNU radio library. Um, those blocks can be dragged and dropped inside of the workspace uh, just like any other uh, GNU radio block. So for instance, just like I can drop an FFT block in my workspace, I can drag a Radio 420 uh, block to my uh, workspace. So the first block we're going to be looking at today is the global block. That block contains the radio parameters. So that's where you set the actual uh, IP address of your system. Um, LO um, frequency, both in TX and in RX. That's where you set if you're using a MIMO radio or a CISO radio, if you want to enable or disable the automatic calibration, what your bandwidth is, what gains you want to use, and what filters you want to use on the Radio 420. Then for the Zepto SDR, you have the sync interleave block as well as the source uh, deinterleave blocks. Uh, they also come in uh, MIMO version where each block, uh, sync and source, have two ports uh, for MIMO radio application. In this case, for the Zepto SDR, um, the Radio 420 inside of the Zepto SDR is not MIMO, so I'm simply going to use the SISO block. So these blocks basically stream the radio, the, um, the, the complex or, or IQ um, digital baseband radio signal to the Radio 420, um, that's for the RX chain, and then receive the digital IQ um, baseband radio signal from the Radio 420, um, and that's with this source block. So I have prepared a little, really simple demo application of what we can do with, with those blocks. Um, what I'm, I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to um, uh, do a radio loopback of um, 500 kilohertz sine wave. Actually, I have used a single source block from GNU Radio, and instead of, uh, of hard coding any frequency for my sine wave, I simply use a, a label, and uh, I'm going to be using a slider to make that label varying between uh, minus one megahertz and uh, plus one megahertz. That way I can change the frequency of the sine wave I'm transmitting and I'm directly uh, plugging that um, sine wave into the Radio 420 uh, sync interleave block so it, it gets sent out to the radio um, or, or sent out to the ZEP2 SDR that transmitted with the radio. Um, and uh, in the receive chain, uh, same thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna receive the, uh, hopefully receive the sine wave that I've, I've been broadcasting uh, on the radio 420. Radio 420 is gonna do the down conversion, and the Z2 SDR is gonna stream the resulting digital base radio baseband signal um, back to the host computer to that source, the interleave block, and then I'm gonna plot. Um, what I receive on my RX chain in baseband using um, FFT uh, plotter from the, the default library. 
And so as these sync interleave and source the interleave blocks um, show, it's a gigabit Ethernet interface that is used in this case to uh, stream between my host computer on which um, GNU Radio is running and my Pico uh, SDR system. So I actually have um, RJ45 cable, uh, Ethernet cable, uh, linking my Zepto SDR to my laptop. And if I, or actually we can actually look at the uh, radio parameters I'm gonna be using here. So I give, um, I, I give the global plugin the IP address of my system. I pick uh, TX and RX LO frequency, which can vary in between 300 megahertz and three gigahertz. In this case, the MIMO is disabled. The automatic calibration is disabled. Uh, I'm using um, a data rate of uh, 5.76 megahertz. That's the uh, IQ interleave data rate. So it gives me uh, uh, a complex bandwidth of 5.76 uh, megahertz in uh, in the baseband domain and then in, in the RF domain. And um, I have um, a, a band selection here that I got to do based on what's the LO frequency I am using. Anything below, um, anything below basically 1.5 gig, I'm going to use the low band uh, single path. And anything above 1.5 gig, I would use the high band single path. Um, since I'm set at, at 0.5 gig, I'm going to use the low band. And then there are gains. There are uh, three uh, gain stage. Uh, inside of the Lime Micro LMS uh, 6002D chip uh, on board of the Radio 420 and three um, and three um, or I must say three RX three gain in the RX chain of the Lime Micro chip and one external gain in RX, which is RX gain three. So the LNA gain, the RX VGA one gain, and the RX VGA two gain are inside of the line microchip, and the RX three gain is an external gain on the Radio 420 board. And in the TX chain, uh, I have three gains as well. So uh, basically, what I have done prior to this little demonstration is I have set those gains um, based on the antenna and this, the distance between the antennas I'm using right now. And prior to the A to D conversion, obviously, there's a low pass filter uh, for which the cutoff frequency is also selectable via filter, uh, via software. And so for um, for a 5.76 megahertz, megahertz bandwidth, uh, anything below uh, 5.76 would do. Um, here I'm simply gonna, gonna use 1.5 and we gotta keep in mind that the sine wave that we're transmit, transmitting cannot exceed um, uh, 1.5 1 megahertz bandwidth. And there are um, RF domain bandpass filters to pre-select an RF band work uh, that you want to look at whenever the your environment your environment is noisy uh, in our case we're in, in a lab here so I can simply uh, bypass uh, that filter and down at the bottom there are explanation about each parameters uh, for instance each gain you get the range uh, that you can you, that that the valid range to which you can actually set the gain of each amplification stage, for instance. Uh, so I'm going to run the demonstration by clicking clicking on the little uh, gray gear uh, at the top. And so what I get here is is three spikes, basically. Uh, so if my if I use a slider to set my frequency at, at 500 kilohertz, uh, I get one spike at zero hertz, which is uh, my DC offset, and, I, and then I get the sine wave that I'm transmitting uh, five, at 500 um, kilohertz. And so I can make that frequency vary. And the other spike on the left-hand side that moves in a different direction is the LO, um, the LO leakage. And so if I, if I bring the frequency high enough, I, I, I'm going to be able to see uh, the the, the slope of my low pass filter prior to the uh, A to the converter. 
So for a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency uh, or a bandwidth, I, I must say of 1.5 megahertz around 250 kilohertz, it starts to roll off and, and same thing at minus at minus 750 it starts to roll off. Okay, so here um, the actual um, DC offset and LO leakage are quite high. So what I can do is I can quit uh, quit running the example and come back to my radio configuration and enable the automatic calibration of the Lime Micro LMS 6002D uh, that you find on the Radio 420. And so with the uh, calibration enabled, it'll take a little bit longer um, before the transmission actually starts, but when it does, um, the DC offset as well as the LO leakage should be um, should be of a lower uh, magnitude. And that's the case again, roughly 20, uh, 15 to 20 dBs in, in DC offset, and about the same thing for my my LO leakage. And now I can appreciate. Uh, a, a much better, um, a much better ratio between the amplitude of the uh, sine wave I'm actually uh, transmitting in the single sideband versus my DC offset and my LO leakage. Okay, and uh, just like for any uh, GNU radio application, I do not have to absolutely use the GNU radio companion. Uh, I can actually use it to compile the, uh, the Python script that will run in the background, or I can actually write that Python script by hand. And so, um, if I want to run the, the Python script that has been generated from this uh, GNU Radio Companion flow graph, I can run, in, run it directly um, from my shell by invoking the name of the, the actual Python script, and the result is going to be exactly the same. So just like for any other GNU Radio application, you are not forced to use the GNU Radio Companion. You can simply um, write write the Python script by hand and the result will be the same. So this was Tristan demonstrating the GNU radio capabilities of the Zepto SDR and the Radio 420 by NewTek. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for listening.